straight ahead on Law & Crime Daily. Tulsa, Oklahoma becomes the latest location in a string of mass shootings. How much more carnage are we willing to accept? How many more innocent American lives must be taken before we say enough? How lawmakers are calling for change. And is Johnny Depp headed back to court? Why the ACLU is asking for $86,000 from the actor. Plus, the Murdoch murder mystery. Why investigators hope to exhume the body of Alec Murdoch's former housekeeper. And later... He doesn't scare me. I've seen Donald Trump make it. Nothing Michael Avenatti can say will scare me. Michael Avenatti is sentenced to prison time after stealing thousands from former client Stormy Daniels. Law & Crime Daily covering court cases from coast to coast. when a gunman opened fire in a Tulsa, Oklahoma hospital. This comes just one week after the deadly elementary school shooting in Yovaldi, Texas. Investigators say gunman Michael Lewis legally purchased an AR-15 style rifle the same day as the shooting. On Wednesday afternoon, he entered the St. Francis Hospital campus where he shot and killed two doctors, a receptionist and a patient. Investigators say the shooter blamed the victim, Dr. Preston Phillips, for causing him pain following a recent back surgery. The other victims include Dr. Stephanie Hussein, receptionist Amanda Glenn, and patient William Love. At a press conference on Thursday, Tulsa police officers explained what happened when they arrived to the scene. Officers entered the building on the first floor and made their way to the second floor based on the information they received. While on the second floor of the vast building, officers began yelling, Tulsa police, this is something that we trained to do. As officers were calling out Tulsa police and advancing towards a suspect location, they heard a gunshot. We believe that was the final gunshot with the suspect taking his own life. Law enforcement across the nation is dealing with increased violence among people. This is yet another act of violence upon an American city. President Joe Biden echoed the sentiments Thursday evening, calling for change in gun-related policy following a multitude of mass shootings in recent weeks. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Charleston, after Orlando, after Las Vegas, after Parkland, nothing has been done. This time, that can't be true. This time, we must actually do something. The issue we face is one of conscience and common sense. For so many of you at home, I want to be very clear. This is not about taking away anyone's guns. It's about vil not about vilifying gun, o gun owners. In fact, we believe we should be treating responsible gun owners as an example of how every gun owner should behave. I respect the culture and the tradition and the concerns of lawful gun owners. At the same time, the Second Amendment, like all other rights, is not absolute. Joining us today is legal analyst Matt Mangino and co-host Terry Austin. Matt, are there laws in the books right now that you think create greater chances for the wrong people to obtain guns? Well, you know, um, Brian, what I think is not so much what's on the books right now, but what isn't on the books right now. Uh, when we look at this tragedy in in Oklahoma, uh, you know, and, and it touches all of us. I mean, I, I had a niece who delivered a child at that hospital. So, so we all have, and we're all being touched more and more by this. But you know, what's the reason to have a, an AR-15? It's not for hunting. It's 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 not for for sport. Um, what's it for? It's to kill human beings. Why should uh, you know a young person, as we saw in? in um, in these other incidents, have access to an AR-15, be able to lawfully buy it. We, we need more uh, you know, scrutiny of, of background checks and other laws, you know, common sense laws that can protect the public from people who shouldn't have firearms uh, in the first place. Yeah, and I know that your sentiments are echoed in Uvalde, Texas, where the bodies of these children were so brutally damaged, they need to give DNA just to identify them for a similar style of weapon. Terry, President Biden said that the Second Amendment right to bear arms is not absolute. So 
How does the United States fairly and legally curtail that right for everyone's safety? Well, I think they have to do a little bit of what Matt was talking about, and I think there are some steps we can do. First of all, they should ban assault weapons. No one needs an automatic or a semi-automatic weapon. They should also ban bump stocks. That increases the speed of the bullets. They should ban high-capacity magazine. That increases the amount of the ammunition. You don't need all of that. And obviously, background checks, waiting periods, increase the age, all of that should be done, and it should be done on a federal level. Yeah, it, it blows my mind. Maybe it's the Canadian in me that there are some people in this country who can't buy a beer at a bar, but can buy an AR-15. That doesn't make sense to me. But like you said, maybe there's some changes that need to happen. Switching gears now to the April mass shooting out of California's capital city as a fourth suspect is now in custody. Six people were killed and 12 more injured when multiple gunmen opened fire in Sacramento. Investigators believe the shooting was gang related. Last weekend, Amatu Lee Payton was arrested in connection to the deadly shooting. Investigators say he was arrested in Las Vegas with the help of the FBI and Las Vegas Metro Police Department. He now faces charges including possession of a handgun and three counts of murder. Police have arrested brothers DeAndre and Smiley Martin as well as Davion Dawson in relation to the shooting. Still ahead on Law & Crime Daily, new developments involving disgraced South Carolina attorney Alec Murdo and the death of his former housekeeper. But first, Johnny Depp is slammed with another lawsuit why the ACLU is asking for more than $80,000 worth of reimbursements. Welcome back to Law & Crime Daily. The American Civil Liberties Union, better known as the ACLU, filed suit against Johnny Depp, seeking more than $80,000 in reimbursement for the organization's involvement in the defamation case. In court documents filed back in April, ACLU representatives say in part, quote, the ACLU produced three witnesses, including its executive director, for over 16 hours of depositions. Along the way, Mr. Depp rejected numerous compromises to minimize the burden and the expenses on the ACLU and its employees. The lawsuit claims the organization complied with a subpoena reviewing nearly 8,000 documents. The ACLU played a significant role in the defamation suit as Heard pledged part of her divorce settlement from Depp to the organization. Heard later testified she only paid $1.3 million of the $3.5 million pledge to the ACLU as a result of Depp's litigation. Members of the organization also helped draft, uh, helped, helped her draft, sorry, the Washington Post op-ed that would become the basis for Depp's defamation claims. As part of his video deposition, ACLU chief counsel Terrence Dougherty admitted Depp's name was part of the original draft. And isn't it true that Ms. Hurd's advisors initially revised the draft to remove any reference to Ms. Hurd's marriage or divorce? I recall a number of email communications back and forth among um, ACLU personnel and Ms. Hurd's attorneys where they were um, suggesting edits to the op-ed relating to um, matters covered in the NDA. And then is it also true that there were some at the ACLU who expressed their belief that excising those references to her marriage and divorce from Johnny Depp made the op-ed less impactful, correct? Um, it is correct. That is correct. She was referring at least in part to Johnny Depp, correct? Now, based on my review of prior drafts of the op-ed, I knew that, they were, um, that, that she was referring to Johnny Depp and her marriage. All right, Terry, the ACLU is suing Johnny Depp for their expenses in connection with the trial. Any chance they'll actually be able to win that argument? You know, I think they're going to settle it out of court at the end of the day. Depp's team is saying there is no requirement under New York law. They're looking at New York law because ACLU is a New York corporation. And even if there had been a requirement to pay back or reimburse the ACLU, you know, they spent a lot of time. They hired these outside lawyers. They reviewed these documents. They produced these documents. They produced witnesses. So even if they wanted some of that money back, it is exorbitant and it might be 
deemed unreasonable. So I do think at the end of the day, they're going to end up resolving it out of court. Yeah. Now, Matt, I get why the ACU is suing Donnie Depp, but they helped draft Amber Heard's Washington Post op-ed. So couldn't Depp have a countersuit against them? Well, uh, Brian, it's certainly possible. Um, and we know that uh, Johnny Depp isn't afraid to, to, to um, stick his nose in a fight. He, he's learning his way around the courtroom pretty well. Uh, and he's had success uh, with this uh, case against Amber Heard. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what we know is that certainly the ACLU uh, attempted to to minimize a any reference to Johnny Depp in their advice to to Amber Heard, but they're relying on Amber Heard telling them the truth about what her relationship was like with her husband and other partners. Well, Matt, at the very least, Johnny Depp understands hearsay, so maybe he takes that knowledge and, and, and points in the direction of the ACLU, but we'll see how that plays out. Switching gears now to California, where actor and comedian Bill Cosby once again faces sexual abuse allegations in a civil trial. Cosby is being sued by now 64-year-old Judy Huth. Huth claims Cosby forced her to perform a sex act with him at the Playboy Mansion in the 1970s, when she was just a teenager. Cosby claims there is no evidence Huth was ever at the mansion when the alleged sexual assault occurred. His attorneys say Playboy provided the mansion's visitor log and calendar from the mid-70s, which allegedly shows no record of Huth visiting during that time. Cosby's attorneys say Huth has also changed her story, saying she was 16 at the time and that the incident happened in February 1975, a year later than she originally claimed. Cosby is now is no stranger to sexual assault charges. In 2018, the comedian was convicted for drugging and molesting Andrea Constant. But Cosby was released just two years later from prison. That was 11 months ago, after the Pennsylvania Supreme Court overturned his conviction because of a previous non-prosecution agreement. The 84-year-old does not plan to attend the trial in person because of health reasons. Coming up on Law & Crime Daily, months after a conviction, Michael Avenatti is sentenced in federal court. Plus, the Murdoch murder mystery. Could the body of Alec Murdoch's late housekeeper soon be exhumed? Welcome back. We'll have gavel gavel coverage of a new case starting next week on Law and Crime. It's the Florida trial of Daniel Redlick, of Danielle Redlick, a woman facing charges for the murder of her stepfather turned husband. Redlick is accused of fatally stabbing her 65-year-old husband, Michael, in 2019. Michael was previously married to Redlick's mother. He also worked as the director of the University of Central Florida's sports business management program. Prosecutors offered Redlick a plea deal two years ago to plead guilty to manslaughter charges, but Redlick rejected it. She's facing second-degree murder and tampering with evidence charges. Redlick called 911 the day after she and Michael had a fight where she told the dispatcher her husband stabbed himself. That 911 call gives us a glimpse inside what can be expected in the trial as it moves forward starting Monday. What's going on at 1231 Simple Drive? I believe my husband is deceased. Okay. And why do you believe he's deceased? Because he's been, I, I just, he's stiff and he, he didn't want it. He might have a heart attack. I don't know. Okay. Did you just find him? No, actually. It happened last night. It happened last night? Correct. So did you find him this morning? Because I know you said that you believed it happened last night. Did you see him last night? Was he okay or was... He was not okay last night. We had we had altercation and he stabbed himself and I ran into the bathroom and then when I came out, I tried to help him and I thought he was just lying in blood. And then okay. I tried to help him and I couldn't. I I... Correct, yes. A disgraced South Carolina lawyer facing a slew of unrelated charges has reached a settlement agreement with the family of his former housekeeper who died at his home in what he calls a trip and fall accident four years ago. Alec Murdoch has agreed to pay over $4 million to the sons of his former housekeeper 
Gloria Satterfield. In the wrongful death lawsuit filed last year, Satterfield's family claimed they never saw any money that was supposed to be paid by Murdoch's insurance company after her death in 2018. Earlier this year, Murdoch confessed to diverting $4 million meant for the Satterfield into his own account. South Carolina's law enforcement division is also hoping to find more answers about Satterfield's death and how and have requested her body be exhumed. Murdoch is facing more than 70 unrelated charges for alleged financial crimes and other charges related to a scheme to commit suicide and defraud his insurance company. Murdoch's accused of stealing nearly eight and a half million dollars from his former clients. Investigators are also still working to solve the murder of Murdoch's wife and son. No one has been charged in their 2021 shooting deaths. <sighs> Terry, it seems that the settlement agreement is the easy part, and probably what the hard part is, do you think the status field will be able to collect all that money? You know, I think they're going to have to get in line. We have seen that Murdoch is in so much trouble in so many different areas that he has defrauded people and taken people's money, and, you know, obviously there are the deaths that surround him. But the money is now being managed by a receiver, and so there are other creditors. And the family's being very patient, but they know they're going to have to wait for this receiver to collect more assets, as far as Murdoch is concerned, and they're going to have to wait until it's their turn to get paid. So great they have a settlement of $4.3 million, but getting that money is going to be very difficult. Yeah. Matt, maybe it's the public defender in me, but if criminal charges are brought for status fields, I can already hear the opening statements uh, for Murdoch. This isn't a coincidence. It's a murder is what I expect a prosecutor would say. But do you see any evidence to support that argument? Well, at this point, we, we don't. But uh, they're exhuming uh, the body of this uh, woman so that uh, uh, a, a full autopsy can be done to determine the actual um uh, you know, cause of death. Uh, and, you know, this is a bizarre case. Uh, you know, we, we first, you know, he tries to stage his own uh, death. Then, uh, you know, you know the, his wife and daughter, I mean, wife and son uh, were, were also uh, murdered. And now you have this, this case of the housekeeper. But it's not unusual for old cases to kind of bring new cases to light. We saw it with Robert Durst. In the cases that we we covered here on Law and Crime in the Daily, you know that where well, there's smoke, uh, there's fire. So you start digging and you, and you find additional uh, cases. Yeah, couldn't have said it better. Where there is smoke, there is fire, and maybe this uh, exhuming of the body finds that fire. When we come back, Michael Avenatti is sentenced to federal prison. How much time the disgraced attorney will spend behind bars for stealing thousands of dollars from former client Stormy Daniels? Welcome back to Law & Crime Daily. Four months after he's convicted on multiple federal charges, disgraced attorney Michael Avenatti is sentenced to four years in prison. As Law & Crime Daily reported, Avenatti was convicted on counts of wire fraud and aggravated identity theft after stealing nearly $300,000 from former client Stormy Daniels. Daniels, an adult film actress whose real name is Stephanie Clifford, rose to fame ahead of the 2016 presidential election when allegations emerged of an affair between her and then-presidential candidate Donald Trump. Daniels later wrote the book Full Disclosure about the incident. Prosecutors say Avenatti took thousands of dollars from Daniels as part of her book deal advance. Avenatti made headlines again when he elected to represent himself in the case and questioned Daniels as part of cross-examination. Right now, Avenatti is serving a 30-month prison sentence on a separate conviction for attempting to extort more than $20 million from Nike. A portion of his latest sentence will be served concurrently with that. Next month, he is set to go to trial in California for additional charges stemming from $10 million embezzlement allegations. Matt, I know it, it's a lot. So he's already facing time on two cases, somewhat concurrent because of the length of time, and has another one coming. So can he serve time for all of these cases at the same time, or will it be one after the other with this California case coming up? Well, uh, Brian, each state has their own uh, sentence guidelines, their own um, statutes that govern the way sentences are going to be uh, imposed by judges. 
uh, there is a lot of discretion. And part of that discretion in most situations is the question of consecutive sentencing, one sentence after the other, or concurrent sentencing, sentencing at the same time. We know the two of these sentences are currently running together. We'll have to look at the California case, ultimately, if he's convicted, and see what their sentence guidelines say in terms of concurrent or consecutive sentencing. Yeah, I'm, first two cases in New York, this last one in California, he's literally got cases from coast to coast. Now, Terry, when it rains, it pours. Avenatti is facing charges all across the country. Do you think he could try to reach a plea deal with the remaining charges, though? You know, I think he better try to reach a plea deal. As you said, he is really facing charges everywhere across the country. And, in fact, if he again goes to trial, say he goes to the California trial, he could be deemed guilty yet again and face more time. He's already admitted that he's made lots of mistakes. He's fought back tears. He said he's destroyed his career and his family. So he seems to take some responsibility for his actions. And based on that, I think he probably should face the prosecutors and try to resolve this last case. Yeah, especially if he can get that time done concurrently. Well, thank you both. And thank you for joining us here on Law & Crime Daily. We'll see you next time as we discuss justice in America.